Hello my crochet friend, welcome back to another video. This is Bruna and today we are going to be transforming this shape, yes, this exact shape into something super cute. You know how much I love turning weird shapes into cute things. So that is exactly what we are going to be doing in today's video. So I really hope you like it and now let's begin. For the materials, I'm going to be using my new crochet hook set. This one is the Color Collection by Pim. And these are the sizes that you are going to be getting with this hook set. And I'm going to be using the 4mm crochet hook. And this hook is actually the perfect combination for the yarn I'm going to be using in today's video. We are going to crochet so smoothly and it's going to slide into the yarn just like butter when we are crocheting. So I'm so excited to use this hook in today's video. And this is the yarn I'm going to be using. This is the Reserva by Lana Grossa. And this is a 70% cotton and 30% polyamide yarn. And the yarn weight, it's number three, DK. And these are all the shades I'm going to be using. And then a small pair of scissors, tapestry needle that I'm going to be getting it from this twisty tool that I got that I can just store all of my needles inside that it's just incredible. Next up, you will need a 30 centimeters zip. This one is the one that I'm using. And then with that, I'm going to be using the matching thread, but not matching with the zip, but I'm matching with my crochet. So I'm using a yellow thread and then a sewing needle and also I'm going to be using some sewing pins. So now these are all the materials so now let's begin with the tutorial. So first I'm going to show you how to make this little square with the flower with the little puffed flower in the center. So I'm using blue for the flower and burgundy for the square. So let's begin with the blue first. So let's begin by working a magic ring. You can also chain three and join to create a circle but I think with the magic ring it gives a better finishing so it's up to you how you want to do this and then I'm going to chain one in which is not going to count as a stitch and now we are going to be creating the flower going around so you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook insert going around the magic ring you're going to pull up a loop and now you're going to be doing this two more times so wrapping it around going around the ring like so and then pull up a loop and then the last one just like so and then you're going to then yarn over and pull through all loops on the hook and then chain two and now you can repeat this all the way around until you have eight petals in total so you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook insert around the ring and pull up a loop and then do that two more times like so, and then yarn over and pull through all loops and then chain two. And now you can just keep on repeating the same steps until you have eight petals in total for the flower. So now once you have the eight petals with the puffed stitch like so, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can now close the ring by pulling the end nice and tight, just like so. So you have the little flower now. And then to finish it off, you are going to chain two, one and two, and then you are going to find the little stitch right on top of that very first petal. There is a little stitch here, so go into that, and then you go into slip stitch. So this is how it's going to look like. And now all you have to do is to chain one, cut off the yarn, leaving a little tail for the weaving and fasten off. So now get the following shade you are using, I am doing in burgundy. So now I'm going to work a slip knot and then you can attach this yarn into any of the chain two spaces. So we have the little chain twos, so you can choose any of the chain two spaces in between the petals. So I'm going to be doing this one 
So I'm going to go into the, the chain two and then pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So attaching with a single crochet and this attaching is the same one that I'm going to be doing throughout this project. So now I'm going to chain one and this is going to count as a stitch. So the single crochet in the chain one is the very first stitch. So into that same chain two space, work a half double crochet. And now into the next chain two space, work three half double crochets. And then a chain of one, so we are doing a corner here. And then three half double crochets all into the same chain two space. So now we'll go into the following chain two space and work two half double crochets into the next chain two space. And now into the following one, you're going to work a corner. So it's going to be three half double crochets, a chain of one and three half double crochets into the same chain two space. So now you can just follow the last two steps all the way around. And then into the last one, we are going to be making a corner. So three half double crochets, a chain of one and three half double crochets. So now all you have to do is to go into that chain one space right at the beginning and you're going to slip stitch the two sides together. And now here we have the square now completed. So I'm going to chain one. Now here you want to leave enough yarn for the sewing and I am leaving 40 centimeters here for the sewing. So I'm going to be cutting exactly to 40 centimeters and this is enough yarn for the sewing of the squares. So now I can fasten off. So once you are done with this one, you can also do the weave in here at the back of the three ends that you have, not the one that you are doing the sewing, just all the others. I'm going to be doing this in a second. So what you're gonna do now, it's make 11 more squares exactly like this one. I have five here. So three, four, five, and six in total with this one. This is number six now that I've just finished. And we are doing this. So we are just whip stitching and joining them all together. So I have the very first six that I did all together. So I'm going to be doing the next six with you guys. And also when joining, you wanna make sure that, that they don't match. Like here we have burgundy and burgundy and orange and orange. So you want to kind of move them around so they are not matching because this here is going to be the top of our makeup bag. I think this works. What do we think? I think this is looking really good. So let's just move this one out of the way because that's completed. And now let's start joining everything together. But first I'm going to just weave in the three ends that I have here at the back of this last one that I did. So I'm using my tapestry needle and you can do the weave in as you wish. We've been completed and now we can start joining all the squares together and I'm going to be starting here. <laughs> so I'm going to be threading this yarn here into my tapestry needle first. So get this very first square and what you want to do is you want to move this yarn close to the corner, the chain one space. And you want to move this yarn to 
the chain one space. So we have the chain one space right here. So just move that yarn through that chain one space, just like so. So now when sewing them together, you want to make sure that the yarn that you're using for the sewing are all facing to the right side. So this one is not, so make sure that it's facing the right side like this. So right side, right side here, right side, right side. So that is easier. So you're just going to be moving the yarn to the corner as we did with this one and then sewing going up. Moving, sewing, moving to the corner, sewing, moving to the corner and sewing. And this last one we can just weave in. So here's the second one. So you're going to be placing right sides facing each other. So we are going to be placing it like this. So the sewing is going to be here on the left side. And now you can just get both squares and now we can just sew going down like so. So you're going to be matching chain one with chain one. So back loop only of the chain one. Sew that together and then go through that just one more time just to lock this yarn in place. And now you can just open the squares because you see the stitches a little bit better. So you're going to get back loop only. You can see the front loop still at the front. So back loop only and back loop only on the other side, the other square, and then sew them together. So now go all the way down following the same steps, joining and sewing the two squares together, remembering to get only the back loops so that we have a nice sewing finish at the end. So as you can see, I got at the end now and I have the two last chain one spaces at the end and you want to go through that three times in total. So I did once, now twice and then a third time and into the third time you don't want to pull all the way through. You want to leave a little loop and then you're going to go through the loop and pull that nice and tight to fasten off. And now you can weave in this end into the matching square. So I have here green, so I'm going to be weaving in into the green section of the square. So as you can see, I have the very first two sewed together. This is how it looks like here on the right side. So I'm going to be placing it here so you can see. And now all you have to do is to repeat the same steps, joining all the squares together. So I'm going to be flipping the third one right on top of the second square and then using the blue yarn to sew this side together with the third square. So I'm just going to sew it here. So I'm going to be doing that. So now I have the third square sewed together here. And now all you have to do is to keep on repeating the same steps, sewing all the squares together all the way down. And this last one, you're going to be sewing it. And this end, right at the end, you can just weave in. So the squares that I've decided to do for this makeup bag, they are five by five centimeters. So they are quite tiny and you can do any other square that you want. This is just an example. And now here in total, this is measuring exactly to 30 centimeters. We are now going to be adding some single crochets and half double crochets around it. So we even um, the top and the bottom. And right after we add that, it's going to measure 31 and a half centimeters for this very beginning here. And then the height, it's going to be six centimeters. And also so that this little row of squares fits into our zip, just like this. So it has to go from one side to the other like so. So let me show you how to do the single crochets and the half double crochets now. So here's the yellow. I'm going to be making a slip knot 
and then I'm going to be attaching into any stitch around. I'm going to be starting into the corner because then I can show you the corner. So go into the chain one space and then you go into attach with a single crochet and this is going to be the very first stitch. And then you go into chain one and single crochet into the same chain one space so that we can create the corner. And for each square, we have eight stitches. So we have to cover all the eight stitches for each square when we move into the following square. So here we have eight stitches. So let's go into the very first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So make sure that you cover all the eight stitches going down. And then now I got into the chain one space. So into the chain one space, I'm going to be working one single crochet, a chain of one and one single crochet. And the single crochet chain one and single crochets will be only for the corners. We have four, we have these two and then the other two on the other side. So now going down, you want to first make sure that you cover all the eight stitches here for the very first square. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we have eight stitches on this side. And then when you get into the sewing, right into the center of the sewing, you can choose a stitch right on top. And then you're going to be working a half double crochet. And this is just to even the little step that we have from one square to the other. So it looks nice and straight as you can see going from one square to the other. We got into the following square. So you wanna make sure that you cover all the eight stitches and then the last one here, eight. And then when you get into the sewing, just right in the center of the sewing, right at the top, just work a half double crochet, just like so. And now you're going to be repeating this all the way down. So as you can see, I have now finished all the single crochets and the half double crochets going across and now I'm here into the other side. So we are going to be doing the corners and the single crochets in between the corners here. So go into the next chain one space and then work a single crochet, chain one and single crochet. And now just like the other side, single crochet into the next eight stitches. And then when you get into the other corner, you're going to do exactly the same. So one single crochet, a chain of one and one single crochet. So as you can see, we got into the opposite side now. So we are going to be repeating the same steps as we did to the other side. So we are going to be doing the eight stitches into the square. And then when we get into the sewing section in between the squares, we are doing a half double crochet. And that is what you're going to be repeating all the way across. So I'm going to be following the same steps now here for this side. And then when I'm at the end, I will be back so that I can show you what you have to do. So as you can see, I got into my last square and I've done already here a half double crochet into the sewing. So now I'm going to finish with eight single crochets all the way down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then the last one eight and now all you have to do is to join with a slip stitch into that very first single crochet so now we are done creating the single crochets and the half double crochets all the way around this is how it looks like so now we are going to chain one cut off the yarn and we can fasten off. Make sure that when you cut off the yarn, you leave a nice tail for the weave-in. So once you have both of them completed, our little row of squares completed, we can now choose one of them to start with and then the other one, we can just leave it aside. We are going to come back to it later once this one is finished. And we are going to be working this next section from squares number two to five. 
So we are not going to be working on top of the first and the last square. So let's get the orange that I'm using next. I'm going to be working a slip knot. So make sure that the squares are on the right side. So right side facing up and you're going to be finding the very first half double crochet that you did. So mine is right here. So I'm going to be attaching with a single crochet into this very first half double crochet. And what we are going to be doing, we are going to be working from this half double crochet to the other, the very last half double crochet that we did. So now for the next section, we have to do double the amount of rows that we have for this very beginning here. So we have six centimeters. So we have to double this amount. So that is 12 centimeters. So we have to do 12 centimeters worth of rows for the next section. So that's what we are going to be doing now. So I'm going to be starting with a chain of one. And for this very first row, this is going to count as a stitch, the single crochet in the chain one. And we are going to be working with half double crochets for the rest of the sections that we are doing. So now all you have to do is to half double crochet into every stitch down until you find the last half double crochet on the other side. So once I'm at the end, I will be back and then I'm going to show you how to go up. So as you can see, I got into my last half double crochet and then I have the eight stitches left at the end as well, just like the other side. So I'm going to half double crochet into the last half double crochet. So this is how it's looking like now. I'm going to weave in these two little ends that I have here so that they are out of the way. Also, I'm going to weave in this other one before I count the stitches with you guys. So I have 37 stitches going across that we are now going to be working back and forth. So now to go up, all you have to do is to chain one. The chain one is not going to count as a stitch from now on. And then you're going to half double crochet into the very first stitch. And now you're going to half double crochet all the way down into the 37 stitches that we have here into this new section that we've created. So at the end, you're just going to follow the stitches you have. And now we have a half double crochet stitch at the end because we are not counting the chain ones as a stitch. So going to the last one and half double crochet. So this is how row number three looks like now. So now all you have to do is to repeat row number three until you have 12 centimeters worth of rows. You know how much I love changing my mind in the middle of a project. So I was going to do the next section, the 12 centimeters worth of rows using only the orange. But then I had the idea of maybe I can do some stripes. And I think that is going to look really nice with the pretty squares at the top so that we have kind of the same colors as we have here for the squares, but also for the side of our makeup bag. So it's going to be super, super cute. So I'm going to be doing three rows for each color minus blue, because blue I'm going to be doing for the bottom section in which nobody's going to see. So we can just do one entire piece using one shade only. And then all the other five shades in this sequence here, I'm going to be changing it and making the side. And let's hope that by making three rows of each, that will give 12 centimeters. So this is going to be the sequence, orange, green, yellow, this grayish brown, and then burgundy. So changing from one color to the next, I'm just going to undo this very last half double crochet and then leaving a little tail for the weave-in, cut the tail, prepare the next shade. I am using green. And then what you want to do, you're going to be creating the first part of a half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch and pull up a loop. And then you're going to leave it like so. And then you're going to finish the half double crochet with the next shade. Just like so. And now from here, you can just follow row three. It's that simple. 
So if you want, you can make a knot here with the two ends so that they are not going to be moving around. So I make a double knot. And now from here, you can just chain one, turn work, and then half double crochet all the way down. So you're going to be following row three. So now you can do as many changes as you want, or you can do the same shade all the way through. And I'm going to be doing my changes and doing my rows. And then I will be back once I have 12 centimeters worth of rows. <laughs> I don't even know how many I have to do. But once I'm done, I will be back and then we can move on into the next step. So as you can see, I have now finished that extension and I have here 15 rows in total and it's measuring 11 and a half centimeters. So I am happy with that. And here for the extension, the width it's 21 and a half centimeters. What you're gonna do now, because we have to cut this, if you are using the same shade, then you don't have to cut it, but I am changing into blue for the next section. So I did cut this already. And what I did, I followed the same steps and I've done this other one as well so that we have this side and the other completed. And the reason why I've done these separately and not a continuation, it's because I want the half double crochets to be going down on both sides, not this one going down and this one going up. So I kind of want the same effect on both sides, kind of like a mirror effect. You can put this aside and we can continue now on this other one. So I'm going to undo this last half double crochet and I'm going to be changing it into blue as I have showed you already how to do it. So now here it's when we have to extend on both sides so that it reaches the same size as here, the squares. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe we can do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 as well. So yeah, let's do 10. So I'm going to chain 11 from here. Nine, 10, 11. And then we can turn our work. So now I'm going to be skipping the very first chain and then I'm going to work a half double crochet into the second chain, just like so. And now I'm going to half double crochet into the chain going down. So we are going to be having 10 stitches here in total as an extension. So I have here the last chain, there we go. And now we count to make sure that we have 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. The chain one that we left here at the beginning does not count as a stitch, just so you guys know. So now from here, you're going to go into that very first stitch of the base that we did with the burgundy here. And now I'm gonna go down and across, follow the stitches, the 37 stitches, to the other side with half double crochets. Now I have the last one here that I'm going to do with you, and then the other extension here on the other side. So go ahead and complete the very last half double crochet as normal. Just like so. And now we are going to be using that very last stitch to make the extension. So we are going to be doing a foundation half double crochet extension using that last stitch. So you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook and you're gonna go back into the same stitch, the very last one. So insert your hook and then pull up a loop. So now you have three loops on the hook. So now all you have to do is to yarn over and pull through the very first loop on the hook, leaving the three loops on the hook like so. So this bottom stitch is the one that we are going to be using for the following half double crochet. So keep this one in mind. If you want, you can place a stitch marker here. 
So now you're going to yarn over and pull through all the three loops on the hook. So now to move on into a following half double crochet, you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook. You're going to be inserting into that bottom stitch. But here at the bottom, you want to make sure that you get two loops, just like so. And then you're going to pull up a loop, going through that bottom stitch, and then you will have three loops on the hook. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through the very first loop leaving the three on the hook like so. So we have the bottom stitch again, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And now we're going to be repeating that until you have 10 stitches here for the extension. So you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook, going into the bottom stitch, make sure that you get two loops of that bottom stitch like so, and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through that first loop and then now you're going to yarn over and pull through three. So that's how you're going to be doing the extension. So I have one, two, three. I have to continue until I have 10. So once you have 10 on this side, then you're going to be stopping and now we can follow exactly the same steps for row three. So as you can see, we have now the extension here on the other side, on the left side. And we have 10 on this side, 10 on this other side, and 37 stitches going across. So in total, we have 57 stitches to work going back and forth now. So all we have to do from this point is to follow the same amount of rows that we did here for the very first extension, the 15 rows, following the same steps of row number three. But now we are going to be having just more stitches. So all you have to do is to chain one, you're going to turn your work, and then you're going to half double crochet into that very first stitch, and then you're going to half double crochet all the way down into every stitch. If you want, you can go back and count to make sure that you have 57 stitches. I know that this is my last one, so I'm gonna go into this last one and half double crochet. Now I'm going to follow the same steps. Chain one, turn, and half double crochet all the way down. And you're going to be repeating the same steps until you have 15 rows. So this is how it's going to look like. So now, if you haven't done it yet, you are going to be making another piece following the first and the second section. So you're going to be skipping the third one. So you're going to be making another piece exactly like this, just first and second section. And then now we have to join these two together. So before you fasten off, you need to leave enough yarn for the sewing that we are going to be doing now, joining the two parts together. So to make sure that you have enough yarn, you're just gonna measure three times the amount of yarn that is the same size as the sewing that you are doing. So just go once, go back twice, and then go back one more time, three times in total. If you wanna make sure, make sure you can do four times, but three times is usually more than enough. So go ahead and cut off the sizing that you need for the sewing, and now we can fasten off. So I'm going to just move the end through the loop like so, and then pull nice and tight to fasten off. So thread this yarn into your tapestry needle and then you just wanna move this yarn all the way until you reach stitch number 11. So we need 10 stitches on this side and 10 on the other. So we are going to be starting the sewing into stitch 11. So just go through stitch number 11, like this. Go through the entire stitch, as you can see. And now go ahead and get the other side. And then you're gonna go through the entire stitch, the very first one of the other side, just like so. And then go through those two stitches one more time just so that you can secure this yarn in place. So now all you have to do 
is to find the next stitch on both sides and then you're going to be sewing the two together and we are using the entire stitch of both sides so next two sew them together next two sew them together and then follow the same steps all the way down and now here is my last sewing so i'm just going to confirm here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so yeah so i'm gonna get the last two of both sides sew them together make it a little bit nice and tight and then now you're gonna go through the last two again then you're going to leave a little loop go through the loop and now pull this loop nice and tight to fasten off so i am now done with the sewing joining the two parts together and this is our shape <laughs> i am so happy right now this is incredible it's looking so colorful and so fun i cannot wait to see this completed it's so cute already oh my gosh i am so happy i'm so excited about this right now so i'm going to be leaving this yarn here if we need to do any sewing with this yarn the same color into this section so just leave this yarn here for now so now go ahead and get the zip you are using because now we are going to be putting this shape together into our makeup bag so make sure that your shape here it's with the wrong side facing up so the right side it's facing the table so we are going to be placing the zip right here into the center of the bottom and then we are going to be joining the sides into the center just like so now we have to sew the two top pieces here into the zip so i am now using thread and needle because i'm going to be sewing this by hand so let's go i'm going to be using double thread and at the end holding both ends i'm going to be making a knot so i'm going to be pinning it first so you want to match the square with the zip not the fabric on the zipper the actual zip so just place it exactly right here and then let's pin this in place and then you're just going to be pinning the other side here so it has to match the end of the zip just like so and then let's pin this in place and now we can just pin all the way down I'm also going to be pinning the other side. So maybe now we can try close it just to see if that's going to work. Oh my gosh. This is so fun. No way. This works perfectly. So now we can start sewing. <laughs> So through the back, move the needle to the front and grabbing a little bit of the crochet, like so. And then I'm just going to kind of go back and forth, just locking this yarn in place. Just like this. So now for the sewing, you have to go very close to the zip here where we have the fabric so just go through and you're going to take the needle to the back like so and then you're going to go around it just like so and then you're going to return the needle and you want to get one stitch of the crochet like this go through the top here go back around going around and then choose a crochet stitch going back to the front like so and now that it's all you have to do all the way down so that's what I'm going to be doing 
I'm so excited about this. You can use any other sewing technique that you prefer. I just like doing this one. So I'm getting here towards the end now. So I'm just sewing all the way down. And I'll make sure that it's nice and even with the bottom of the zip. So going to the last one. And then you're gonna go through the last one one more time. And then you're going to be leaving a little loop at the end before you finish the sewing. Then you're gonna go through the loop, pull nice and tight to fasten off. And now if you want, you can take this yarn to the back, to the reverse. And now here you can do maybe two or three fasten offs just to secure this yarn in place. So now I'm going to be cutting it off. So I have now this side now completed. We have to now do the same to the other side. So I'm going to be following the same steps and sew this side and then I will be back to show you the next step. So I'm done now sewing the zip in place and this is how it looks like. Are you ready? This is awesome. <laughs> this is so good. I love this. Look at it. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. I'm so, so proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> now the next step that we have to do is to sew the two sides here, the squares and the blue section. The other sections we are doing after. So we have to do these two right now. So I'm going to be doing this side here with you and these little flappy things of the zip, we are going to be hiding it inside the bag like this. And now you're just going to be putting the blue section in which is the bottom section with the squares together and we are going to be basically just sewing this close so we also want to do three times this section here or four times with yarn so that we know that this is going to be enough yarn there we go for the sewing now i'm going to be where's my tapestry needle oh here <laughs> So I'm going to be threading this yarn into my tapestry needle. So go ahead and find the very first stitch of the blue section. Also remembering that we are sewing going across just this section here. We are not sewing the sides. This is a different sewing that we are doing. And then you're going to find another stitch here on the other side. I'm doing the chain one. I'm going to be leaving a little tail for the weave-in and then I'm going to make a knot here. There we go, a double knot. And now all you have to do, here we have the raw side, so you're just going to find one stitch of the blue section and then you're going to go into the next stitch of the square and sew them together. And then you're just going to be repeating that all the way down. So when you get into the section where you have the little flaps of the zip and also the zip here. So we want to just cover around it and just leave the zip showing like so. So I'm going to go now to the other side and sew it right here. So you can see we open it, it looks like this, and then when you close, it's going to stop right here. So just do this section as you wish. 
and now I'm going to sew the other side all the way down. So now when you get at the end, you're going to fasten off and weave in. So this is how the sewing looks like. Pretty good. So now I'm going to do the same to this other side. I'm getting more and more excited as I finish the sewings because now we just have four sewings left to do to complete our makeup bag in which are the little corners right here. So all you have to do is just fold the side like so and then we are going to be sewing it close the two parts together. So we have the second section, the side of the bottom section and one square here on the side. So I'm going to try to use all the little ends that I have here and kind of match the sewing with the color. So if I fold it here, we have the orange. So I'm going to try to use the orange on this side and sewing the two sides together and then green and then yellow. And then maybe here we can do blue all the way you can just decide how you want to do this part. So I'm going to be doing a little time lapse of me doing one of the sewings and then all the others are exactly the same. So this is how it looks like, as you can see. It's going to create kind of like a little corner. So this is going to be the side, the shorter side, and these are going to be the longer side of our makeup bag. And now all you have to do, just repeat the same steps to all the other three corners. So you're going to fold and sew, fold and sew, fold and sew. And that is the last step that we have to do for our makeup bag to be completed. So once I have all the next three corners completed, I will be back and then we will see this completed. So for these little flappy things of the zip, I'm going to be adding just a little bit of fabric glue here, just so that they are not moving around. Just like this and then I'm going to let it dry you can put something heavy on top if you want so I have just finished with the weave ins and this is how it turned out I haven't turned it inside out I want to do it with you guys so we can see it together <laughs> so let's do it <laughs> okay oh my gosh I'm so excited everyone <laughs> oh my gosh no, this is so... Okay. Okay. Look at the structure. Oh my god. What? Look at this. So now we can close it. And now we have our makeup bag completed. No way. Okay, just a minute. Just a minute. So this is how our makeup bag turned out. I cannot believe, I'm still shocked that that shape turned into this. It's so cute and the zip. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> so I have here my everyday makeup. This is exactly what I was thinking of putting inside my makeup bag, but you can use this bag for any other Thing that you want to use it for, for like toiletries, for your crochet items. If you want to carry crochet inside here, you can use as a little pencil case. Also the colors together. It's exactly what I love. This is basically my color palette 
in a makeup bag. So 70s, right? This is my vibe. I love this. I love what is going on here. I'm so proud of myself that I actually made this. I haven't added a lining because I don't think it's necessary for this particular yarn. You saw with the close-ups that this yarn, it's so incredibly different. It looks like actual fabric in a strand. So it's really, really incredible. And it gives also the structure that you need. It also gives the coverage that you need. It's pretty solid as you can see so we don't see through so i would say that this yarn it's perfect for bags and little things like this look how incredible it is it has the perfect structure it just sits like this and it's empty there is nothing inside and it looks like this already it's the cutest thing so i'm going to open my makeup bag, my new makeup bag. Oh my God, I cannot believe. So this is everything I use when I'm doing my makeup, my everyday makeup. So this is what it has to fit inside my makeup bag. So I have wipes, highlighter, mascara, foundation, bronzer, blush, concealer. I have some brushes, powder, lipsticks, sponge, eyelash curler, and then lastly, eyebrow gel. So that it's all the makeup, my everyday makeup. So close it and oh my gosh, no way, this is the cutest thing. Look at it, no. I still have a lot of room inside here so I can actually put more makeup inside my new makeup bag and this is how it turned out i cannot even believe that i have all my makeup in here now you know i've always dreamt about having a crochet makeup bag because i love doing my makeup and having something crochet when doing my makeup is just the most special thing ever this is so unique i love this oh my god let me know in the comments what you guys think I think you can already tell by my face that I love this, right? Because I cannot stop smiling. Let me know in the comments if you are going to be trying out this tutorial and what color is you going to be using? If you're going to be using it different colors like I did, if you're going to be doing it colorful or if you're going to be using one color all the way through. And if you end up making one, don't forget to tag me on Instagram or TikTok so I can see your take on this incredible makeup pouch bag. So yeah, this is how you make this incredible bag. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. And also, if you liked today's video, don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can watch more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!